All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a show about the end of the world. What you think? Sounds pretty dope. And we're going to have time travel and an entire time traveling superhero agency. Bruh, this is sounding better and better by the minute. And we're going to have one of the time traveling agencies fall in love with an old woman that works at a donut shop. Wait, what? Don't even worry about it. It's going to be hot. And then we're going to have a talking monkey. Yo, yo, hold on. Stop. Rewind. Go back to the donut woman thing. And then we're going to have this dude who has an entire upper body and he's going to go and dance at a club. And he's going to find this furry and she's going to sleep with him. And she's going to be like, ooh, that's kind of hot. Are you, are you joking? Nah. And that's the Umbrella Academy, everybody. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zack Snyder. If you're new around here on Yen, we pull from every corner of nerd culture to talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. Last year, Netflix dropped the very first season of the Umbrella Academy, and everybody was talking about it. It looked pretty hype, so I watched it, and, and, and well, to be honest, I didn't really know what I was going to say about it, so I didn't really make the episode until like a year later. So here we are. I kind of know what I have to say about it now. So let's let's take a look at Umbrella Academy. In October 1989, 43 women around the world gave birth. None of these women had been pregnant when the day first began. How much do you want for it? If you don't know anything about it, The Umbrella Academy was originally a six-issue comic miniseries published by Dark Horse in 2007. It did really well, allowing them to do another miniseries in 2008, and finally a third miniseries which just got finished in 2019. With the success of the comic, Netflix brought in a television adaptation in February of 2019, with its second season currently going into production. The show features a strange dysfunctional family of superheroes. One weird day, well, one really weird day, 43 women around the world randomly get pregnant. It's like that time when Jesus was born, except like 43 little Jesuses were, were born, but there can only be one Jesus, so we're just gonna say that there were 43 little Jesuses running around. Out of all these miraculous births, seven of these children are taken in by Sir Reginald Hargreaves, an eccentric entrepreneur who also just so happens to be an alien. Yes, the series gets into strange territory, but I kind of like that. We'll, we'll get into that in a bit. So Sir Reginald, he trains these seven kids, changes their names from Jesus to just numbers, calling them one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and they are dubbed the Umbrella Academy. They fight crime like all superheroes do until they grow up, go out, and do their own thing. Just because you have superpowers doesn't mean you don't have to go out and do your taxes. Speaking of, can I have a superpower that allows me to not have to do my taxes. Please. Fast forward some years in the future and Sir Reginald dies mysteriously, causing the now adult Umbrella Academy students to reunite and well, hijinks ensues, kind of. So the first thing you need to know about the Umbrella Academy is that right when you think you understand everything wacky it's going to do, it goes to one up that wacky thing with yet another. Oh, okay, seven children with superpowers born at random from women who weren't originally pregnant. I get it. This is our basis. It's not any weirder than that. Never mind, there's a talking monkey. That's fine. Oh, there's a robot that serves as a mother that looks extremely lifelike. And I mean, I've kind of seen weirder, but also Luther has super strength, but he got into an accident and now he has the upper body of a chimp. And Ben has the ability to bring monsters from the pits of hell to fight for him, but he actually died as a kid. And so Klaus, a drug addict that has the ability to conjure the dead, talks to dead Ben all the time. And this boy, whose name is still number five because he went missing before they got their actual real names, is actually a 50 something year old that traveled back in time to stop the apocalypse, but he accidentally got pushed back into his 13 year old body. And yet this is still just the tip of the iceberg. So this may come as no surprise for you, but honestly, I personally got hooked like super immediately. I love it when something takes a lot of crazy ideas 
and just kind of runs with it. If there's anything that can be said about the Umbrella Academy is that it takes a lot of crazy ideas and it runs with it, which is why I love just about everything it does. But I also hate to say that I'm a little bit disappointed with this show and that's why it took me so long to make this video. Now I can't say anything for the source material because I haven't read the comics, but I do want to at some point but I, I just feel like as much as I love the concept, I feel like the show executes it poorly. I think the first red flag for me was the editing, which some people really seem to enjoy. And I think I understand why, but hear me out. The editing in this show is super noticeable. It's experimental for sure, but not in a good way. They do these weird things where they almost emulate YouTube vlogs for a sequence and they have just bizarre things happen with the cuts. And I think people like it because they notice the editing. It was different, but good editing is something that's often overlooked because if it's good, you're not really focused on the editing, you're focused on the narrative. You could say that this was a style that they were going for, and sure, I guess you could say that, but more often than not, instead of being wowed by what was happening on the screen, I was just left confused because something looked bad or was out of place and they could have just done much better here. And when your story is already convoluted because of your quirky and wild ideas, I genuinely believe that this show was kind of at a disadvantage by not making their editing more simple. My second big complaint is the acting. Now I'm usually fine with subpar acting if the story is good. I mean, I actively enjoy the CW Arrowverse. Not everybody on those shows can act significantly well. And I'll admit it, I do like the story of Umbrella Academy, but even then there would be scenes where not only the editing was weird, but then the acting was bad. I think Luther was my least favorite character, even though he tended to have a lot of screen time, simply because the actor playing him just wasn't good. Not only that, but I mean, super strength isn't all that exciting either. So they had to make it exciting by giving him a chimp upper body which is not necessarily a bad idea, but when the actual chimp in your show is better at acting than you are, you, you have a problem. <laughs> as far as the other characters in the show, Ellen Page as Vanya is pretty good. I actually really liked her. She tends to have a pretty good acting record. My favorite actor though was probably Robert Sheehan who played Klaus, the conjuring drug addict. He was able to ham it up a bit, which made a lot of sense for that character. And as strange as he was, you know, talking to the dead while stuffing stuffing pills up his ass. He was probably the most understanding character in the entire show, because I don't know about you, but if your father forced you to sit in a dark room for hours to listen to dead people, I would probably turn to drugs too. The weird thing for me is that I'm super conflicted on how I feel about the show overall. On the one hand, the editing and the acting and even some of the writing, apparently Jeremy Slater developed this and he's on the writing credits for 2015's Fantastic Four and the awful, awful 2017 Death Note movie. So the writing's not the best either. But on the other hand, for at least most of the show, I actively enjoyed watching it. Each of the characters are all super unique. Not only do we have interesting superpowers that are oftentimes not utilized in superhero adaptations, but each of the main characters have their own backstories, which are interesting to see unfold. Almost all of the characters go through really solid and relatable character arcs, while still staying immersed in their wacky and interesting concepts. And especially with people like Klaus with his drug addiction, Allison with her family, Vanya with her abandonment issues and her powers, number five and the fact that he's an old man stuck in a 13 year old body, Luther and the fact that he starts taking drugs finds a furry to sleep with him. Okay, maybe not every character has a tight knit story arc, but at least it was fun to watch these characters interact with the world. We also have a lot of twists and turns with characters disappearing and reappearing and relationships going all over the place. And that's not even talking about the entire time traveling agency that is used to keep timelines in check. I mean, this show gets wild and I honestly really love that about it. It's the main reason that I kept watching but halfway through the season, I also felt like there was just some wasted potential. So personally speaking, I can't fully recommend watching the Umbrella Academy. I think there are some aspects of it that's great. But there's equally just as many aspects that are bad. I honestly am more excited about checking out the source material though. I will be checking out the comics at some point. We will be getting a season two to this show and I don't know exactly how I feel about that either. I'll probably watch it because there are some questions that were left unanswered. But unless the acting and editing gets better, I just feel like there's gonna be aspects of this show that are just gonna keep on leaving a bad taste in my mouth. 
but but then again i did watch more titans after season one of that and uh titan season two was still bad so yeah i'll probably still be watching umbrella academy and it's it's, it's far from bad so there you have it but that's all the time we have for today if you liked the video hit the like button if for reason you didn't like it hit that dislike button let me know down in the comments so have you seen the umbrella academy and if you did did you like it did you hate it I want to know. I want to know if you were excited for season two. I watched a lot of Netflix shows last year, and I'm going to be covering a lot of those seasons throughout the next coming months. So let me know what you want me to talk about more, because I probably have seen it. In the meantime, thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.